digital architecture, computational design, parametric design. You heard all these and many other terms trying to describe what is happening in our incorporation of computers and fabrication machines into our daily architectural practice. I have been right in the middle of all these concepts for 10 years now and I want to try to make sense of it all because I feel that the entire field is not yet defined and structured well and it needs a proper discussion and some basic theoretical as well as practical skeleton. So in the next few minutes I will describe to you what my plan is, how I divided my time and resources in the past and how I perceive the development of digital architecture in the future. I will introduce a lot of free contact and lessons that I will offer and at the same time call you to participate, help offer ideas and eventually cooperate. This channel will then hopefully develop into a series of discussions about architecture as a human machine co-production and be a part of setting the foundations for this discipline. So here we go. Although there are many aspects of architecture that will change in time, I will focus on the development of three big fields and I envision being involved in all three in the future. If you followed my work, you know that I have been programming architecture since 2007. For different large-scale projects, I wrote code in order to geometrically and statically optimize structures, automate the generation of geometry and automate the process of production. This is one corner of the triangle, and in the future it will be connected with the beam development. Without going into details for now, this envelops any kind of algorithmic optimization or automation in every stage of the building process. Now let's go to the second corner, virtual reality. With some friends, I recently founded a startup that offers virtual reality visualizations in architecture. I think that I do not have to explain why in detail, because two things are obvious. First, architects need visualizations to aid them in their work, as well as to present their work to the clients. Second, VR is the next logical step. Why would I be satisfied with rendered images or even a video when I can experience the space, walk through it, interact with objects, change materials and furniture, and eventually design in VR? And all of this in a photorealistic surroundings. So I want to invest more time in integrating the algorithmic design and immersive and interactive experience that VR can provide. The third corner is something I have been approaching very slowly since my PhD, and that is artificial intelligence. This third field is the most challenging one, but it complements the first two perfectly. If you're not sure about applications of artificial intelligence in architecture, expect a lot of videos on this channel and a lot of discussions about possible implementations. I know that there are immediately dozens of questions popping out like, design is art, how can an algorithm have aesthetic values when we cannot define them? But be patient, we will discuss and analyze these questions in the future. By the way, if you wonder where 3D printing, robotics and CNC manufacturing is, Stay tuned, I will explain why they are or are not a part of this triangle of mine. So now that I have shown you what my idea for the future of architecture is, let me discuss what is there in it for you and how you can help and be a part of it if you want to. The first thing I offer to you is free software. Thousands and thousands of you have already downloaded plugins for Rhino under the name of Eve, which I created. I will keep making these in the spare time and here you can contribute with your ideas and your advice. I also plan to make commercial plugins in the future and although I do have a couple of ideas already, you can help with an advice, simply telling me what you need and what you would like to automate. Everything that you have seen coming out of the programming architecture kitchen so far in the last 10 years was programmed by B and it was mostly written in C++. So for all of you out there that want to learn how to do this, I'm starting to prepare a course and I will post it on one of the appropriate websites when the time comes. However, this process is extremely time consuming and takes hundreds if not thousands of hours of work and its development will depend on my schedule and on your support. Finally, as I mentioned at the beginning, I plan to develop this channel into a series of discussions and lessons on digital architecture. These videos will be free, but their frequency and quality will depend on you. If you go to my newly created Patreon profile, you will be able to donate a certain amount per video. The more you support me, the more videos I will make and the better the quality will be. In the future, the supporters will also have certain benefits like discounts on the commercial software or programming courses or access to certain videos that will be available only for them. Check out my Patreon page and I do explain how it all works there. These videos will not follow a certain linear structure, they will probably appear to be random, but they will always be in a certain category, so that at any moment you will have a combination of videos that you can watch if you're interested only in one subject or a group of subjects. If a certain subject catches on, it can become a mini-series. The videos will be discussions about interesting and important questions like, do we need computational design and why? Is the goal of parametric architecture to look cool or to be efficient? Can those two go together or not? Is orthogonal geometry here to stay even if we get completely free of prefabrication and cost concerns? 
Should architects be more engineers or designers? If the obvious answer is both, is that possible? To what degree? And how does computational design affect this simplistic division? Are design and optimization the same thing? Is there something specifically human in the design process? Can AI do it? Is digital architecture even a thing? Can it be observed as a separate discipline? Is composing music really comparable to design? Of course, most of the questions that we will discuss will be the ones suggested by you. Very, very important. The videos will always try to have an educational component to them. If I talk about optimization, I might explain some basic optimization algorithms. If we talk about geometry, I might explain some mathematics needed to understand the subject. That way it will not turn into a theoretical or philosophical discussion, but we will always keep our feet on the ground and try to understand real-life physical aspects of what we are discussing. I will also try to get guests and have talks with people that have practical experience in this field. So it might take a form of a podcast with short episodes, but let us not get ahead of ourselves. So if you're confused or not clear on what to do now, let me sum it up. Subscribe to this channel, wait for new videos and participate in the discussion with your comments and suggestions. Go to Patreon and support the development of the discussion so that the videos become more frequent and have better quality. Your Patreon support will also give me more time to develop more free plugins, tutorials and lessons. Check out the websites listed below, download free plugins and ask not what architecture can do for you, ask what you can do for the future of architecture. Spread the word, share all of the videos, websites or links that you like. The more people join the discussion, the more fruitful it will be. Our goal is to promote and honestly save the architectural profession from a pretty weird position it is in. And the only way we can do that is if we show it is beneficial to us humans and to the planet. We have to show that parametric design should not be equated with the creation of pretty pictures. Instead, parametric design should mean energy efficient, cheap housing, customization, comfort, and eventually automation that will free us from boring and repetitive work and give us more time for creative endeavors. Now stay free and let's get to work.